Welcome to Cal Poly News. This is Dharma Bartram. I'm Megan. What's with the weather, Dharma? It's going to be another hot weekend in Los Angeles. Let's take a look at LA. It's going to be heating up to 92 today and will be a bit cooler tonight at 69. Tomorrow, highs will reach 92 and will be as warm as 70 at night. Make sure, sure to wear sunscreen and stay in shade on Saturday when it heats up to 94 this weekend's high. The low is going to be reasonably warm at 69. A little cooler on Sunday with a high of 87 and as low as 68. There are fire weather and excessive heat watches if you're in Los Angeles or Ventura counties. Let's talk about San Bernardino, Riverside, and the rest of the Inland Empire. It's going to be pretty hot and dry, being as hot as 106, so make sure to stay hydrated. Let's bring it over to Megan. Don't leave home without your sunblock this weekend because temperatures are expected to be above 100 degrees. The National Weather Service has issued a heat advisory for the valleys and lower mountains of Los Angeles and Ventura counties. Make sure you're staying in shaded areas and delaying any strenuous activities to avoid heat stroke. Winds are going to be a problem too. Areas of northwest winds ranging 30 to 45 miles per hour are expected through the Interstate 5 corridor this evening. Winds will make driving difficult, especially for drivers of high profile vehicles. So stay safe and have a good weekend. Here's Megan with local news. Beaches in Long Beach could reopen today after being closed all week following Monday's sewage leak. The spill released 2.4 million gallons of waste into the Los Angeles River after the collapse of a five foot sewer pipe. The preliminary water safety test came back clean and a second sample was taken yesterday. That test will be critical in deciding the closure status of beaches, according to the Long Beach Bureau of Environmental Health. Let's bring it over to Olivia. A man confessed this week to planning a chemical weapon in an Oxford Walmart, police said Wednesday. The device caused a six-hour lockdown and a $120,000 loss in revenue when it was found June 18th, Walmart management said. The suspect, 31-year-old Martin Reyes, was already in custody for an unrelated crime when he confessed to researching and planting the weapon. He said it could release dangerous gases, but a hazardous material team was able to render the device safe after the lockdown. Reyes said he did most of his bomb-making research on the Internet. Now, here's Julia with National News. 17 protesters were arrested yesterday after a fight broke out outside the Republican National Convention. A group calling itself the Revolutionary Communist Party burned the American flag. One member reportedly lighting itself, himself and others on fire, police said. Officials said that the, after the flag was lit on fire, fighting erupted between the group and other protesters. Two officers were injured during the scuffle. Protests have been filling the streets of Cleveland since the beginning of the convention on Monday, although most of it has been peaceful with a few confrontations. Now to Faith McQuiston for a deeper look into the GOB convention. Despite a firestorm of criticism, Ted Cruz refused to change his position on Donald Trump today, saying he was not in the habit of supporting people who attack my wife and attack my father. Cruz was booed off stage at the GOP convention last night after refusing to endorse Trump. Cruz encouraged Americans to vote their conscience in November and tr mentioned Trump only once. As the crowd's anger grew, Trump entered the convention hall early, effectively cutting off Cruz's speech. Trump tweeted afterwards it was no big deal and that he had known about the speech two hours beforehand. Now let's turn it over to Daisy Bolin. Video footage was released Wednesday of a Miami police officer shooting an unarmed black man, 47-year-old Charles Kinsey, in the leg on Monday while Kinsey's hands were in the air in surrender. The unnamed police officer was sent on administrative leave. As long as I've got my hands up, they're not going to shoot me. That's what I was thinking. They're not going to shoot me, Kinsey said. Wow, I was wrong. Kinsey was assisting his 27-year-old autistic patient to get him to return to the facility where he lives. North Miami Assistant Police Chief Neil Cuevas told Florida reporters the scene was reported as a man threatening with suicide. However, neither Kinsey nor his patient were armed. The patient held a toy truck while Kinsey held nothing. Now over to Caitlin Chen with International News. Turkey's president declared a state of emergency for three months following Friday's failed army coup, led by the U.S.-based Turkish cleric Fethullah Gülen. Who had a, uh, in last night's televised address, President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, who had already closed many social institutions, promised that the move would protect democratic freedoms. However, if the state of emergency is approved by the parliament, President Erdogan will have radically enhanced powers. He and his parliament will be able. To, he and his cabinet will be able to enact laws without parliament's approval and limit free speech. The United States and Europe have urged Turkey to maintain order. Next up is Jen. Mohamed Boulel, killer of 84 people in the mass murders in Nice, France, had been plotting this attack for months and had several accomplices, including um, 
said Prosecutor Francois Moulin. Moulin, who oversees terrorism investigations, said five suspects, including one woman, are in custody facing preliminary charges. Um, the Islamic State claimed responsibility for the attacks, but officials said they had not traced it back to the extremist group. Let's turn, turn it over to Yassine. With in international sports news, 68 of the world's best athletes will not be taking part in this summer's Olympics in Rio because they cheated and were caught. The Court of Arbitration for Sport ruled against the Russian national team in an appeal hearing earlier this morning regarding the IAAF doping ban passed earlier this month. Six-time Olympic gold medalist Usain Bolt backs the decision, saying, quote, This will scare a lot of people and send a strong message that the sport is serious about cleaning up. Rules are rules, and doping violations in track and field are getting really bad, so thumbs up. Now for Mohi with Sports News. Ten people were arrested in Brazil suspected for planning a terror attack aiming the upcoming Olympic Games. Officials say they had no affiliations with the Islamic State, but they did try and make contact with them. Justice Minister Alexander de Moura said the ten were part of a terrorist cell that has been planning it at attacks via texting apps. Because of this, the federal government added $24 million to beef up security before the Olympics. This raises questions of whether Brazil is ready to host the Games. With the Zika virus outbreak, delayed construction, and an increase in crime, Rio is struggling to get ready with only two weeks left before the Games begin. Next up, we have Karen with entertainment. Despite failing to take the number one box office spot this weekend, the Ghostbusters movie is much better than the original. The all-female comedian cast takes the franchise to the next level with sharp humor, and new technology makes the original films obviously fake ghosts to become more natural characters. However, the movie's plot follows too closely to the 1984 version of the film, and it has too many references to the original movie. A wave of nostalgia doesn't do enough to um, give the movie success, but realistic special effects and humorous actresses do. Now let's go to Whitney with more entertainment. Last night, First Lady Michelle Obama was a guest on James Corden's Carpool Karaoke series. They danced to Stevie Wonder and Beyonce songs while James drove around Washington, D.C. Michelle even talked about her new initiative called Let Girls Learn. At the end of the video, Missy Elliott joined their adventure and rapped to her songs, This Is For My Girls and Get Your Freak On. Now, here's Mary. Comic Con, the largest annual comic and entertainment convention in the world, has officially kicked off in San Diego, and we've highlighted the must-sees of the day. The upcoming movie Trolls will screen a preview as well as have a discussion with the stars, like Justin Timberlake and Anna Kendrick. Thank you for watching, and have a good night.